The Bleed Synergy type is one of the three main build archetypes now found within Gotwick. The focus of the setup is to increase the amount of normal attacks caused by your troops and then adding on additional effects wherever possible to make the most out of those extra attacks. The primary enabler of the Bleed Synergy ironically doesn't cause or interact with Bleed at all. Sonara is the primary enabler of uh, the bleed synergy and she is the normal attack enabler of the build with her four star ability causing normal attacks to trigger themselves again in a similar way to how Layla works with commander active abilities let me show you here report uh, don't know how hard this will be to find ba -ba -ba -ba. Yeah, something like this. This attack triggered enemy Sonara's War Soul, Awakening Skill, enemy A2 lineup will trigger an additional attack within one second. So A2 attacks there, and then A2 procs again, and it hits again. So it, it repeatedly procs, and then you can see here you start getting crits, and then the synergy starts coming into play with all that those additional attacks. The catch here is that Sonara will both silence and excite all commanders and troops on your side of the battlefield. And no, I'm not about to spiel about how Sonara is a dominatrix out to show everyone a good time. She is the polar opposite of that, in fact. She will cuck you at every turn if you try and hybrid in any of the other synergy types into formations with her. Because commander actives will... Be unable to be cast of her, so Layla's out the window of that, and your troops won't be able to weakness attack either, so Jamie's out the window of that. So, with female and with weakness, you can use both of them together simultaneously, but Sonara will prevent any interactions from any of the other synergy types, so this build will be very much all or nothing. This will also pose a bit of a difficult obstacle that will probably be touched on in greater detail later on in this guide, but if you have an existing account set up with certain premium items, so if you have, say, like I do here, uh, dragon skills like dragon follow-up, strong assault, tear, if I were to run bleed, all of these skills would in effect be useless because they all interact with things that Sonara blocks from being used, so tear here works with weakness attacks, she excites all the troops, so th those can't be used. Strong Assault is active damage, actives can't be used. Follow up procs off active casts, actives can't be used. So if you're going to build into bleed, you effectively have to start from scratch in certain areas, which is frustrating because at the time of recording at least, it is one of the more meta builds in the game, especially at the higher pay brackets. And we'll go into all the details of why that is uh, when it comes to the commander specifics, I can imagine. So before we get off the topic of Sonara too fast, I'll show you some maths about what she'll bring to your lineup since this is the most fundamental part of this build. Uh, what Sonara brings and then can synergize into has to be of such high value, of course, that it, it overcomes the buy-in cost effectively of forfeiting all active castings at uh, the ability to weakness attack with any hybrid setups with, with Jamie and any of the other synergy that can come alongside those two archetypes too. So of course something like silencing, you, you're forfeiting a lot through that. You can't run anything here really. You can run maybe Andrea, Lena, Miranda and Lats. That's pretty much it. Like Cersei is entirely built around active casts on all your commanders, can't use her. Layla the same. Daenerys, you can... She she does her dragon attack on her 4 star at least, so she's not terrible. But all the disarm effects, the reduced cooldown, all totally to waste in a bleed build because of the silencing aspect. Sunil too, can't snowball her. 4 star if you can't use actives. Arya get no use out of this. Annie, same thing. Marge, same thing. So you're, you're very 
limited in what you can use in these builds. So what Sonara brings has to be so good that that, that is worth it. These are a lot of numbers here. I am well aware. You can pause the video and scroll over these numbers if you so wish, but the basic thing to take from this is Sonara will take your normal attack trigger values from 1 per unit on average to 2.1 every time they attack. So I should probably add this now, actually. No Sonara. Ba -ba -ba -ba. It's very unprofessionally done, I'm well aware. Uh, will be one normal attacks. So you're over doubling how many normal attack procs you have to then funnel into things like Raya and Kevin uh, from using Sonara at four star alone. When you start getting a weapon and then leveling that up, if you're able to spend that much, that will obviously keep increasing more and more. But obviously for, for funneling in things that synergize with more and more normal attack procs, this will obviously be very good. But also just the damage alone from these normal attack procs, even though they do lower damage, will at base take you from uh, the damage. Again, I should probably add this. No scenario equals uh, formatting's weirder. One normal attacks. So you're gaining about 30% increased damage just from normal attacks with scenario alone which will help bridge that gap from no commander actives being cast especially you can see on both of these values too when unlocking her weapon uh, she has uncharacteristically compared to layla and jamie a bigger leap from no weapon to having the weapon so just getting the weapon is about the equivalent of having the weapon already and increasing it by two stars. So that is a very big leap actually. And if you're in like a mid spender pay bracket and you're not entirely sure about where and what to spend on to increase the value of your account, whilst this will be exceedingly expensive because it will require thousands and thousands of black diamonds to ensure it dropping for you. In terms of a like BD to account improvement as a bro science ratio, getting her weapon will be dispro disproportionately more important to bleed than it will be to female and weakness, at the mid spender bracket at least, because that leap, that increase in how good it is, uh, is a lot higher than you'll see with just unlocking Layla or just unlocking Jamie's weapons to zero stars. Now, the secondary enabler of this build is ironically the namesake of this build. So Rhea will be the commander that primarily creates bleed effects. She does this through critical strikes, but she also enables those critical strikes herself through normal attacks used by all troops on your side of the battlefield. So it's through that where we have the basis of the bleed synergy. You have Rhea, who is the damage source in effect, and then you have Sonara, who's acting as her engine, helping her create as many crits and bleeds as possible. Crits have varying values. The base value is 120% on her and Meryl, but John is at 150% on his crits, and they can proc together and hit for 170% as well. But bleed is a fixed number and a fixed mechanic, which you can actually see by... Uh, hovering the four star of a commander that causes it. So you see here on Barrett, bleed is a it's effectively a damage over time effect. If you've ever played MMOs or things like that, that will probably be a very familiar concept to you. But the easiest way to visualize it is that it will do the equivalent value of a single normal attack, but spread over five seconds. However, and this is something I'm not sure everyone knows, bleed damage does stack and the effects don't overwrite each other. So unless the fight is in the final few seconds and about to time out whilst the bleed effect is active, you can envision bleed being applied as indirectly another normal attack in terms of damage value. So I can show you this in a report. Uh, if I go here, I am gonna show a lot of Dell losing rallies in this video, I do apologize. I have got her permission to show them though, of course. So I think in this report at seven seconds is a good example of it. 
we're looking for A3. So you see here, enemy rare uses the War Soul Awakening skill, inflict ally A3 lineup with bleed. So bleed is on A3, and they lose 1,947 infantry. But then at 8 seconds, it will apply bleed twice more. So there, once again, lose the same amount of troops. But then over this fight, you see here, A3 lineup, blah, 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 causes crit. And then that applies it with bleed again. And then as we go down again, it's again, another crit. And once again, Rayer applies bleed on it. So that's two more bleed applications to the A3 lineup at eight seconds. So that will now be three stacks of bleed hitting A3 lineup at nine seconds. And it will be three times the damage if we can find that there. 5,888 infantry lost compared to the 1,900 and something uh, when it was first applied. So bleed does stack and you won't have to worry about its damage being overwritten from other uh, bleed sources or anything like that. The more bleeds you can put on the enemy lineups, uh, the better. As a little tooltip fine print about bleed, if we go back to here, you can see in something like Barrett, he does specify whenever each allied lineup in the front row uses normal attacks. It's the same of Rhea. Uh, whenever allied troops, blah, blah, blah. Uh, whenever the allied front row lands a total of 20 normal attacks. So if you're running something like Inf Cav, you won't be multi procking the normal attack triggers on something like Rhea, if that makes sense. It will only be the front line that actually procs them. So you will probably want to take that into account when you're thinking about how you want to set up. You, you won't be able to multi-proc these normal attacks in the same way you would with like double or triple weakness, for example. To just exaggerate how many you can get, it will just be the front row. And that's another thing which lends credence to us being in a very monotype meta as well. On the topic of formations and troop types as well, bleed, of course, is a very large infantry bias. You can see here just how many infantry commanders are here. But Sonara has passively infantry health, infantry defense, and then Vreya also, as the other enabler, has the infantry attack and also cav attack. So you can run mono cav or inf cav as off builds, but you primarily see bleed players playing in mono inf. For mid-spenders, the majority of best options past Sonara and Rhea will be primarily stat funnelers, where the bulk of synergy comes from just Sonara and Rhea, and the rest are just funneling stats into making their synergy as strong as possible. Because of course, the more attack you have, the more damage you're getting from those additional normal attack procs, the more damage you're getting from bleeds, the more damage you're getting from crits. So these two alone provide the majority of the synergy for the build by themselves. It's quite similar in like, hybriding weakness into stuff with just Jamie and one of his healers. These two do sort of function in quite a similar way to that. The commander rankings page here is a bit outdated and binary, I think. But the key things to rounding out a bleed setup, if you can't find things that synergize really well with Sonara or Rhea, will be finding highly statted commanders to complement Sonara and Rhea that don't have four star abilities, which primarily synergize with commander actives or weakness attacks. So for the most easily accessible commanders that fit that criteria, there is Barrett, as I showed earlier. He is a bleed enabler external to Rhea, but he has no attack stats attached to him. He just has health and defense passively. I can probably show him in here as well. So he does get 18% at fully awakened, but the bulk of his stats will be those defensive stats. So that's a big downside to him. There is also an interesting way in how he works. I'm gonna get to some of this stuff a bit later, but Barrett and also Meryl don't actually proc off the additional Sonara procs. So what I mean by this is if you actually analyze a report uh, here, 
At five seconds, there is one normal attack and two Sonara procs. So you would think, according to Barrett's four star, that would count as him normal attacking eight uh, three times, and it would only require another five to cause that bleed to have a chance to go off, right? But as you scroll down through the report, you have another normal attack at six seconds and two more Sonara procs. And then at seven seconds, another normal attack, and then two more Sonara procs again. So that's at nine normal attacks, according to the tooltips at least. But you'll have to keep going down, keep going down, keep going down, until eight normal attacks external to Sonara actually happen, until he has a chance of using his bleed. And of course, it's only a 50% chance to use it. So here it will be approximately at 14 seconds, 24 seconds, and 34 seconds, there'll be a 50% chance of all lions to use a bleed. So as a va as an average value, it's about 7.5 bleeds across a fight, which is about 7.5 extra full damage normal attacks across the fight, which is actually pretty decent. And he had a, a reputation of being really bad from people I've asked, but when I tested him, he is actually surprisingly okay not great compared to the more premium stuff of course but as a a lower spending option in that in that say fifth spot he is actually all right and then there's also chris who fits that uh build of what i was saying earlier about a stats funneler he has attack and health which are the stats you want if i go back and show his stats again 66 percent uh, attack and health at full books and then 18% imp defense and his weapon when you start leveling it up uh, this will start to be able to reach quite high values in fights so if you envision it as you lose 25% of your imp and you gain 75% imp defense that's really good and he does actually start I'd say approaching the value of something like Andrea who is one of the better options in these mono imp setups. So if you start getting a two, three, four star oath and you don't have too many of the more premium commanders, Chris with weapon is probably better than you expect just because of the stats he'll funnel into Sonara and Raya to deal more damage with. If we go back to the commander screen, Meryl, of course, is good for imp cav or mono cav bleed builds you'll have rob and gorel as well rob for cav gorel for spear but I, I just feel like these two are, are very very unideal because whilst you could run them and their four stars do synergize with sonara theoretically so rob will proc off every cavalry hit same with gorel every time spearman hits he'll stack his debuff but in rob's case the stats just aren't there. He doesn't have cav attack, which is such a big loss. And then Gorel, there just isn't the supporting cast to make a spear bleed build work when considering the alternatives. Like if you're gonna run spear, there's just no reason to not run uh, mono spear weak, uh, mono spear female or spear weakness. They're just better at buffing spear than forcing Sonara in there with with her imp stats. So realistically, you're going to need more epic token commanders up at 4-star to make a solid lineup. And the three best at that, in my opinion, for Mono Imp at least, aren't even listed on this page. Well, there is Kevin. So whilst on here still, there are Julian and Kevin. These have been pretty popular historically in rounding up lead builds. Julian is just mostly raw stats. And he does have a 4-star which will synergize with Sonara because it procs off every attack, but it has a cap and it's quite a low cap as well, so you will reach full effectiveness pretty quickly, so we won't overly synergize with Sonara realistically because you will hit that cap whether Sonara is there or not. This used to be bugged and he surpassed his cap, but it has been fixed now. He can be decent, but he will be at his best when there's multiple lines for his stats to get more value and as I mentioned a little while ago, 
that's not really how the game is being played at the moment. It's very much a mono meta. But for things like castle holding in bleed or AC perhaps, where you're forced to defend in multiple troop types, Julian will gain value there. Kevin is a sticking point for me. It seems to be, or has seemed to me at least, uh, to be consensus that Kevin is a bleed staple for mid spenders without the 1000 BD commanders, especially due to how he synergizes so well with the extra normal attacks from Sonara. What I did mention about Barra and Meryl does not apply to Kevin. Kevin does proc off of Sonara normal attacks. I can probably show that in one of these reports. Was Kevin using any of these? Are they too whaley to use it? Yeah, you're just going to have to trust me. Kevin does uh, proc off the Sonara normal attacks. So especially if you have a, a highly leveled Sonara weapon or something, uh, Kevin will gain a lot of value through that. Although then again, if you have a high <laughs> leveled Sonara weapon, as you can see with Peace down here, you probably have a lot of other stuff you're going to want to run either way. So that's a bit of a tricky uh, thing to juggle i guess but the the reason why he, he's been so popular uh, is because he counters weakness really effectively and weakness is for mid spenders probably the most popular build right now so the way kevin's four star will work if we look at it when each allied line up in the front row uses a normal attack there is a 15 percent chance uh Double chances for melee troop types though, so that if you're running mono imp, this will be a 30% chance. But it shields the lineup with the greatest losses. And then if we look at Jamie, when uh, blah, 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 weakness attack status attacks the enemy lineup with the most troops lost. So what this means is when all lineups for a weakness build are attacking the same lineup, Kevin will funnel damage reduction, flat damage reduction onto that lineup and reduce weakness attack damage by a huge amount. So Kevin will really, really counter weakness builds because of that. The problem is though, his stats are relatively low compared to the alternatives. And in a mono meta, you're losing a lot of stats through running him and funneling the damage reduction onto the lineup with the most losses isn't as important when facing into bleed mirrors or female builds because their damage is much more spread of course so when you actually test kevin into bleed or into female he loses a lot of his value and drops down the tiers by quite an alarming margin he is undoubtedly good though, I don't want to give the wrong impression, he is very very good and if you have him 4 star and of running him in bleed, that is fine and in often cases is at the mid spender level the, the correct thing to do. But there could potentially be certain things if you're blind attacking for example that cover a broader spectrum of things that might be more ideal to, to use. So the commanders I referenced earlier that aren't even on this list are... Andrea, uh, Lats, and Patello. All of them, of course, are the highest statted mid spender infantry commanders available. And none of their four star abilities are blocked by Sonara in any way. So, Lats. Where's Lats? The bottom here. She has 90% all imp stats, basically. And her healing effect and her stacking infantry defense effect are totally unaffected by Sonara. They'll still go ahead as usual. She is conventionally imagined with Jamie because of that healing effect, but it still works normally with Sonara. All healing effects and synergy are fine, and this plays into Patello as well. His effect will still proc our flats alone, and he'll give the 90% inf attack, which can scale into the crits, the bleeds, the normal attacks, the extra normal attacks from Sonara. He'll just multiply further and further. And that's where he starts to potentially get a bit of an edge over something like Kevin. In certain scenarios, at least. Lats and Patello alone will get his 4-star functioning, and Lats without her weapon will be a 57.5% uptime of Patello's buff across the fight. 
uh, which will average out at 4.6% damage reduction when accounting for uptime. And if you have her weapon, it will be 65% uptime or an average of 5.2% damage reduction over the fight. As well as uh, the attack that will help scale into everything else as well. With the uptime taken into account, you can see that 5% attack. He goes to somewhere like 16, 17, 18% attack, I guess. I did mention in my Patello video that this was bugged in reports and affecting all lines, but in the end it was more tooltip semantics, and he does indeed actually only affect the front line. And something I didn't even know myself until recently is Andrea's 4-star is taken from the proportions rather than the numbers. So if you run, say, 90k inf and 10k bows, into just 10k spears. The way I was interpreting it at least was you have more imp than their spears because 90k is higher than 10k. So you'll get the defense buff instead. But it actually goes off proportions. I think I have a report myself. Save to show this. Uh, bu -bu -bu -bu. Yeah, here. So here I have, I'm sending more imp than his spear. But he's sending 100% spear and I'm sending... I don't, I don't even know, like 8% or something. So if we look at one second here, it says proportion of infantry is lower than proportion of enemy spearmen. Blah, blah, blah. So I gain the attack instead of the defense. So you can sort of play with the proportions of your lineups to affect this because you don't have to worry about losing commander damage if you're running bleed because Sonara silences everyone anyway. So if you know you're running into someone else running mono spear or something you could run like 99 percent inf and then one percent of something else for example just to force that buff onto you that's quite a niche thing and probably a bit unnecessary but andrea you can squeeze a bit more effectiveness out of that effectively and she'll give about 75 percent all imp stats are fully awakened as well so of all these lats has Probably the best stats and the best 4-star, so she'll be the top pick. And then Andrea and Patello are a bit more debatable. Patello probably is a better 4-star, marginally. Well, not marginally, it's much better. <laughs> but then and Andrea probably has slightly better stats on the whole. But it, it is pretty close. But the, the defense can't be overlooked. It is the health and attack even out, but the attack is pretty much all Andrea. But if we go back to the word pad, I would probably rank for mid spenders at least. So mid spend up mono inf bleed priorities. That's not how you spell that. Uh, something like so Sonara and Rhea are mandatory. And then Lats. Then it will be Kevin into weakness. He is so good into weakness. Then it gets trickier. I will rank it as Patello, then Andrea, then Kevin not into weakness, then Barra, then Chris. This is mono inf only, remember. If it's two lines, uh, it will be different. And then Julian. I'm not just pulling all this out of my ass, I promise. I've done a lot of testing on this stuff. You can pause and look through it, this stuff if you want. Um, but yeah, you can, you can just trust me if you want. The, the problem with this stuff, if if I really show you and uh, let you lurk over the numbers and whatnot, is the testing outcomes seem to vary so much depending on fight imbalances. So like say how close fights are, how hard you win, how hard you lose. So it's really hard to apply a totally consistent rule when it comes to a commander as unique as Kevin, at least, with his effect. So he's he's so much better against weakness, so much worse against female. And then, of course, Patello's attack stats will do better if you're countering, because they will multiply further. And there's just so many different factors that you're really going to have to take this with a pinch of salt. And I would advise you to do your own testing, to make your own decisions. And not just follow this as gospel, but I think this is probably about what I would 
advice to people in terms of account building and is, is how I'd prioritize it also if I were running Bleed myself. Andrea and Patello are very, very close in how good they are. When it comes to mono Inf, at least, I would prioritize getting Patello to four star ahead of her just because he's more flexible. He, you can run him in spear builds and like female Inf uh, weakness hybrids. And he probably has more upside if you can get Lats's weapon, which all the tests were done without. Whereas Andrea's value will be pretty static, whereas Patello will gain value from having Lats's weapon, from having his own weapon when that gets released too. Whereas Andrea will probably remain about where she is uh, forevermore. Up until this point, I have noticeably avoided talking about the 1000 BD commanders. But similarly to female, these will power spike the build very, very hard. John will be the clear first priority if you are shopping at this budget. His crit ability will synergize with Rhea to such a ridiculous extent. It's probably on the level of Cersei with Layla in terms of how much this spikes a build, as a first edition at least. And then it will be Dayron. Uh, as the next best option. He'll, in a vacuum, in terms of what he brings, probably be as good or potentially better than John. But you need John to enable him first, because he'll scale further when things are affected by bleed. And if you want everything aff affected by bleed, you'll need John first. So John will have to be the first pick, and then Daeron. Uh, the key thing to know about Daeron is he's effectively bleed Cersei. And by this I mean... This, in a vacuum, doesn't look that great. Like, if you compare it to, really, Sandor. Sandor scales at 550% uh, uh, on less attacks as well. So, uh, potentially, Sandor is better than Daerum, right? On his 4-star. But, the, the difference is, this will hit into every lineup on all lines. So, if we go back to a report... Thank you, Peacetown, for being such a whale. If we go to 12 seconds in this report. Uh, there's Dayron. Here, so accumulated normal attacks trigger enemy Dayron's War Soul Awakening skill. So he'll hit the Imp, which Del here has Imp Health, of course, and Imp Defense. But then behind that, it just shreds through the other lines. So it, it will do counter damage to Spear. It will smash free that the cab that has no health for defense same with bows yeah it would just do absurd amounts of damage throughout a fight through repeatedly proccing this especially in things like ac where people are forced into mixed lines or if you're rallying someone's castle directly like here uh, dayron will be ridiculous but as i mentioned previously you will want john before him uh, past those two it will probably be Night King, realistically, that's best. Uh, as the fifth around the formation out, shock horror, right? Night King is good. Uh, th there's no synergy attached to Night King, but the things he does work best with Bleed because whilst he doesn't have synergy, he has counter synergy for other things, if that makes sense. So you see here, he this isn't an active skill. Like, it sort of is, but it doesn't proc... Uh, wildfire of Cersei that can't reproc of Layla, I believe. So he's anti synergistic with female because of that. Whereas with Sonara, she doesn't block any of his stuff. He can just do all his stuff and you reap all the benefits of it. And there's no downside at all. And because of that, Night King will effectively be of peak value in bleed builds. If you happen to have Sandor at 4 star for any reason and aren't actively spending to get to the Night King level, so say you're like a gifted whale account and you just have like this 5 or just like Sonara, Rhea, Lat, Sandor, John, Sandor will be uh, better than all the mid spender options obviously. You just want to be aware that this will only hit one lane up as opposed to, to Dayron hitting everything. So don't be fooled by this damage percentage. He is not better than Dayron. But he is definitely still 
very very good compared to everything else in it, to the compared to the mid spender stuff so again if we go back here uh, thousand bd uh bleed mono inf priorities it will be sonara raya still they're both just mandatory then john then Bayeron, then night king then sandor if you can't get any of them it's probably lats uh, maybe Kevin into weakness somewhere in there as like a a tech option if you're if you're trying to counter someone you know is running weakness for sure he could potentially go up even higher somewhere in this list to be honest Knight Night King okay you can as said previously run Imp Cav or Mono Cav with this build if if you're running mono cav it will probably be uh sonara raya as always enzo same as lats like his four star won't be blocked he'll give huge stats then probably meryl and then julian i would imagine maybe rob no i'm not entirely sure about this one if you're running inf cav you can throw meryl in there I know BDR were messing around with running a lot of InfCav with Meryl on that some of their top accounts during the last UC season, which was interesting to me. But you will want to be aware that he doesn't proc off Sonara's additional attacks. So you will lose value because of that. Plus you won't be gaining any value out of his health buffs on the front line, of course. But the crits will be able to uh, become bleeds through Rhea, of course. So past this point, uh, you will have your lineup. You'll have your commanders. You know where you're running them. So you'll have your dragon skills. I don't own any of these. But there will be dragon flame, which will be the equivalent of follow up and tear for bleed. It will just proc off every 10 extra normal attacks i think is the tooltip on it might be wrong on that and there's also bleed which will increase at level 9 uh, bleed damage by 10 percent which i think will just take the percentages from 20 percent per tick to 22 percent because the boat scales in that same way as well i think assist might be better after you have flame compared to bleed still i'm not entirely sure about that bleed will obviously gain a lot of value if you have john if you have john though you're just going to have it by default because you're spending that much so it's not really something you need to overly think about i imagine but I'd, I'd probably prioritize it as always as reinforcement reroute rally size if you're a rally leader then flame then probably assist then bleed then you'd want one more to fill it out or three more if you've got nine slots in the sapphire or something so you have like legion damage legion survival legion healing just whatever you fancy you already have out of those really uh, as far as castle skins go there is one casino skin which synergizes with this build which is the boat this is a namesake of like black pearl and people like that in atd it's been pretty memed <laughs> because it is uh, pretty anti-formatic just a boat sitting on grass you see here uh increase that's a weird tooltip actually increases all enemy lineups bleed damage i assume it means taken i have tested this it does increase your bleed scaling by about 25 percent so we'll take it from about 20 percent a tick to about 25 percent a tick this will actually be a fairly big jump in damage if you have four star john at least so this casino skin is actually pretty decent if you're running bleed builds actually if you don't have four star john you will lose a lot of its value because raya alone just won't cause that many bleeds she'll cause a fair bit but not enough to fully maximize this multiplier and then as far as synergy counters go uh, bleed will counter weakness 
for all the reasons I mentioned previously about Kevin and his four star ability. And female will counter bleed. Weakness will also have a high budget problem where Baelish won't be able to uh, reverse any active casts because Sonara is blocking all the active casts anyway. So Baelish into bleed is terrible and entirely pointless. And then there's Kevin. He'll just totally ruin weakness damage, especially when it's two or three lines stacking onto uh, your formation. But then female, they will really counter bleed builds because of their disarm effects and or just things that stop normal attacks. So here, Cersei will have things missing their targets potentially uh, when they're normal attacking. Danny will disarm and... Marjorie will disarm as well. So female can really hinder the engine of, of the bleed build by stopping those normal attacks. Because obviously the less normal attacks you're getting off, the less you're able to start churning out things like these 20 normal attack procs from Rhea. And your damage will really be reduced because of that. So bleed is in a very good spot overall. At the mid-spender level, it's been really helped, I think, by the re release of Pat Patello. Because you'd have Sonara, Rhea, Lats, Kevin, and then that last spot was a bit awkward. Even Kevin is a bit awkward when you're not running into weakness a lot. Patello helps round that build out a bit now. At the high budget, it's, at the time of recording at least, probably the best build in the game. Potentially, we're going to start seeing mono calves and L comps countering it a bit. And maybe that will then bring around more like mono spear to counter that. So we'll see how that sort of plays out at the, at the highest levels. But the, the most popular mid spender build is weakness on the whole. And because of that, bleed is in a great spot because Kevin destroys weakness damage and weakness tends to have a spear bias and obviously the inf bias from bleed will really help fighting into that so I see a lot of people building into bleed for totally understandable reasons and hopefully this video has been of some help to you